Um, so welcome to your reading. First of all, um, I feel like you definitely have a lot of love and emotions um, for someone. And this person is stirring up a lot of um, affection within you. Like you really care about this person. And I feel like for some of you, it's to the extent where even if you can't be with them, you will care about them no matter what. So it's it's like a very deep soul connection that you have with another person where you want them to succeed. You want them to be okay. You want them to be happy, even if it's not with you. And so you help out this person possibly behind the scenes. I'm getting like you falling in love with someone who you consider a friend and behind the scenes, you, you know, do a lot of things like for them. You could uh, offer them advice. I feel like they're coming to you for advice because you have a very balanced way in which you see the world. So they, they kind of come to you. They're like, I'm planning to do this. What do you think? What are some of the potential pitfalls? And I feel almost like, um, you know, a, a sense of like liking somebody who you consider a best friend where you just want them to be happy and you want them to, you know, you want them to be yours, but if they're not going to be with you, you just want them to be happy. So I do feel this immense sense of uh, unconditional love that you have for another person. It shows up here as your energy, the Ace of Cups, okay? Having love for somebody, feeling this immense, immense love overflowing uh, out of your heart to another person. And I feel almost like there is something here in the spread that's telling me something is not getting off the ground. You could be working with this person. They could be a friend. And so you might not want to mess up the working dynamics or the friendship. And as a result of it, you don't let your feelings known, even though you feel it immensely. The person that you're dealing with, they show up as the Ace of Wands. I'm drawn to the scars. This is somebody that might have a lot of scars on their hands. Like physically, literally, they might have a lot of scars. Or it's somebody that really grabs life by the horns. You know, they're adventurous. They're risky. They might not stay around in one place. They're trying to make a lot of things happen for themselves. They're also somebody that you might feel they're not going to stick around. So I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to kind of like limit their options. I don't want to keep them with me. I want them to roam. For some of you, you might be dealing with a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And there is a sense of destructiveness with this person. Either they are, you know, prone to being very impatient and make bad decisions and impulsive and go after the first thing that they see, or there is a carelessness about them in the way that they live their lives. They might be here, like here today, gone tomorrow. And I'm once again drawn to the scar. So it might be someone who's accident prone or somebody that cr likes to create, you know, tension and conflict in a situation. And so as much as you care about this person, I feel like you don't feel safety in their love or you don't feel like, like they're the right person for you, even though you feel an immense sense of attraction and just um, kindness and like this soulful connection that you have with another person. And I feel like for, for many of you, especially, I, I see a very strong singles vibe. For many of you, you know, you're not short on suitors. You're not short on attention from other people. But there is somebody in your midst that is very dynamic, very different, very colorful. They bring a lot of excitement into your life. If you feel like you've just been going through the motions, you know, working hard and um, just getting through things, you know, work and home too, then I feel like this person, they bring a breath of fresh air or they're so exciting to be around. But for whatever reason, you don't trust. It's like things are just not getting off the ground for whatever reason. Um, you know, taking two steps forward, one step back. It's like things are very, very slow. Even though there's a lot of attraction and there's a lot of love, 
um, something's not getting off the ground. So I'm inclined to believe like it might, could be a friend that you're falling for or somebody in your work environment and you don't want to uh, ruin the dynamics. The person could also have a lot of suitors. This is a card about communication and the arrows of love. She's kind of either pushing for the communication or she is blocking off the communication. It's somebody who is inundated by too many text messages, too many emails, too many uh, messages like um, through messenger. So it's somebody that has a lot of attention that a lot of people like and they might have a lot of things going on in their lives and they're trying to sort things out. They're trying to manage and they're trying to, you know, they, they might have a lot of options as well. And so you see them as someone who's quite popular, very dynamic, very fun to be around. But you fear that as much as you love them and as much as you you feel for them, you just, you you feel like they're not a safe choice. They're not a traditional type of a person that you would, you know, normally go for. They're different. And so it can feel a little bit scary. It can feel a little bit scary. I feel like you're dating somebody or interested in somebody who is very different from the types that you dated in the past. So I, I feel like some of you, if you, you've been dating, for example, uh, investment bankers, you're now drawn to, you know, like um, a football coach. So it's like something very unconventional and it's thrilling and exciting. It's somebody with a really good, you know, like they, they have a lot of life experience under their belt. And it's somebody that has uh, traveled a lot. It's somebody that is, um, they see the world as a place to explore. And if they come to you and they're like, hey, let's go exploring. You feel like you can't really trust them to be a good relationship partner. Just because they're more adventurous, more daring, more of an adrenaline junkie, you feel like you can't really trust them as a relationship partner. But I feel like your assessment might not be accurate. They might be, you know, into the adrenaline rush, but that doesn't mean they're going to carry that into their relationship and, 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 and um, say like, oh, I'm not monogamous, you know, because one person's not enough for me. I don't feel that way. So I feel like, you know, what they do to, to find the thrill in other areas of their life doesn't really translate over into their love arena. So I feel like you you might need to, you know, really look at this person and how their patterns in relationships and how they live their lives. But I feel like they're very honest and very truthful. But I feel like something's not really getting off the ground because you fear the connection. Um, I feel like for others of you, there's another relationship partner as well. And what I have is somebody that's offering you something very solid, someone who's very hardworking, somebody who's like a safer choice. They're predictable. They're romantic. They're also like, um, they don't leave when the going gets rough. And they're somebody that stays around. You know, they don't really like to experiment. They like the tried and true. And they're like a creature of habit. And I feel like it might be um, an earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or Capricorn. And I'm also feeling like you might be drawn to a workaholic, not an alcoholic, a workaholic, someone that that takes their jobs really, really, really seriously. They might be a little bit dull and boring and they, they're all work, 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 and they don't really talk about anything else. And I feel like you want to offer this person some fun, some excitement, but it just seems like you can never get past that friend zone, okay? For whatever reason, it might be the environment that you're in. So bring them out of that environment and bring them into your, your world and then introduce them, them to new things. I feel like it's just a matter of you taking the initiative to kind of bring them away from their natural habitat and then crossing over to your world so you can show them some fun. You can show them how you do things. So that the two of you can be alone. So finding alone time, I feel like if there's a stalled relationship or if things are just not really getting off the ground, finding a, a, a way for you to kind of bring them into your world, either solicit them for a date or, you know, tell them to meet you for coffee or telling, tell them to, you know, hey, why don't you take a break from work and come with me for a walk? You know, be very, very nonchalant about it or be very like, um, just, um, 
be very, um, just don't come into it expecting, you know, let's have a big date. Just, just so you can make that initial connection with them and then get to know them a little bit better. Because I feel like your initial assessment might not be accurate about a specific person. And so I feel like there is someone who's very exciting and there then others of you who are dealing with someone who's like all work and no fun. And you find them really, really fascinating as well, even though, you know, right off the bat, you feel like, oh, they're boring. They, they don't seem like they have anything else. They're just like work, so work focused. But I feel like your assessment of a person might not be accurate for this um, this week. But either way, I feel many of you are naturally very, very drawn to another person and you want to spend the time with them. I see many of you kind of like um, every time, you know, in conversation with other friends or other people, if their name comes up, you kind of um, it rattles you a little bit. And I see somebody like right outside your door, you're outside their door, kind of hovering, trying to rehearse in your mind, like what should I talk to them about? How should I, um, I need to plan out the, the, the conversation so that I have something to say. Otherwise there's going to be that awkward silence. So I feel like you're, you're, you're trying to rehearse a conversation in your head, or you're trying to think of like talking points so that the conversation doesn't lag or there's no lull in the conversation and, and that would in turn, you know, create the awkward silence. I see you wanting to get to know somebody, wanting to like, you know, get them out of their element so that you can get to know them more on a personal level, but nothing is really being done. It's like admiring somebody from afar, but there's no concrete actions taken from your end to, to make it a reality. OK, so this is something we need to work on. We need to make our intentions a little bit more known and we need to be a little bit more verbal with, um, hey, let's um, why don't you take a step away from work and, you know, go for a walk with me or get some coffee with me. Or you can say, like, you've been working really hard. You want to take a break and, you know, do this with me. Um, I feel like that would be a really non-threatening, uh, non-committal way to spend time with somebody in a platonic way without giving your intentions away. So if you don't want them to know that you like them, but you want to spend one-on-one -on -one time with them, it would be a really good way for you to, you know, get your foot in the door. Okay. Um, other areas of your life, Libras, I feel like the emotional life spilling into this spread here. And what I'm seeing here is, um, we have the justice card with, which is your card. And what it's, what it's telling me is there needs to be a better balance of emotions and in the work environment, okay? Balancing out emotions in the work environment. And especially for those of you who are in positions of power, we have the emperor here. This is someone who is very prominent, very revered and respected in the work environment. So if you are in a work environment where you're managing people, you're managing personnel, you need to learn to be very, very impartial and very fair. So that means treat one person the same way that you would treat another person. And, you know, it, it seems very, very intuitive, right? But I feel almost like, and this is a natural inclination for all of us. We have people that we gravitate towards. We have people that we like more than others. We have people that we're a lot more compatible with than other people. And in a management position, we need to separate those personal relationships or those personal feelings in the way that we treat our personnel, in the way that we treat our coworkers, in the way that we treat other people. So erring on the side of fairness and integrity, I feel like that's going to be very crucial for you. It sets you apart as management material. And it also creates an environment, um, it, like a, a really good working dynamics in the team atmosphere where people can come to you because they know that you are very impartial and they know that you are fair minded and you won't, you know, um, you, so that you will give proper advice to everybody. So I feel like, you know, being a lot more impartial um, being more understanding and being a little bit more, 
it's like taking the the moral road okay taking the high road uh, living up to your true potential being a really good leader and being very impartial in how you deal with your subordinates and then for others of you um, who are not in management supervisory you know positions I almost feel like you might be experienced this experiencing this in a work environment where you are admiring somebody because of their ability to solve problems or their ability to be very impartial and very fair even if they don't like somebody they don't make it known they just treat everybody like one person is exactly like the next and I feel like that's really going to change create like a paradigm shift within you and I feel like you are in awe and admiration of this person um, I see some of you as well you know thinking about possibly um, shifting into a new work environment or having to travel a lot for work um, I see you signing up for assignments I see you as well um, I, I feel like we have here the two of wands and the chariot both of these are travel cards long-distance travel um, traveling in order to land a work assignment traveling and then coming back and then um, disseminating information or sharing information so I see like you traveling from one place to the next or uh, coming going from your branch to another branch um, seeing how they do things and then bringing that information and that knowledge back to your company and talking to us a, a higher up a supervisor or manager and sharing the information I see some of you as well sometime for this week being called upon to kind of like um, provide honest feedback on a person and I feel like if you're one of your employees or one of your co-workers might put you down for a reference and you're getting some call back and I feel like if you're you have somebody that you feel is uh, underperforming they ask you can you be my reference and you don't know what to say you don't want to lie and say yes I will give you a sterling you know letter recommendation but at the same time you don't want to say no I will not and and hurt their feelings so there are a lot of like middle ground things that you kind of need to work on and there are just um, honesty is the best policy okay don't worry about upsetting people if they're upset that's kind of on them you need to be truthful and honest and I, I just feel like you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place you don't want to hurt uh, someone's feelings but at the same time you might not f not feel like you want to recommend them for something so I see that element coming in here and I see you you know whenever you're in a work environment you work really hard you um, go above and beyond to make sure that you know the ins and out of how to do your job and I feel like you're very thorough when you do your job and so when people are not as um, as adept as you when it comes to f fulfilling their job responsibilities to the best of their capabilities I feel like you don't really have the patience to deal with them so be careful about that too and uh, I mentioned this for Virgo but I feel like the energy is also coming in here honesty is the best policy err on the side of you know neutrality but at the same time you are someone that people look up to so make sure you set a good example okay I'm gonna leave it at that I hope the reading is helpful for you guys Libra happy happy birthday to you and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon